In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gospel of August the 6th, 2017. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Over them. Then from the, sh from the clou cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate, and were, and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone, until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today, as we celebrate the solemnity of the Transfiguration, it is very important. It is very good that we take of all the, the Scripture. First, the prophet Daniel. I watch thrones up, and the ancient one took his throne. His clothing was snow white, and the hair on his head also. His throne was flames of fire. I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. And he received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. Then we have from Psalm number 97, The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Clouds and darkness are around about Him. And from the second letter of Saint, Pe of Saint Peter, We did not follow cleverly devised myth when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have been eyewitness of His Majesty. When that unique declaration came, This is my Son, my Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves hear, heard this voice come from heaven. All right. First of all, there is a beautiful clue or rather the explanation why the Lord himself uses this, this phrase, the Son of Man. He will use it many times to refer to himself. Whenever he is not saying ego i me, that is I am, he is using this one, the Son of Man. Now, for ancient Israel, this was very clear. The ancient one, that is God, in his throne of flames, it's unmistakably God. But then there is one like a son of man coming, and he is coming on the clouds, so he is also God. How can this be? He could not know. He only spoke, but then he said, he received dominion, glory, and kingship. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. So he must be God. But still they do not know that he was the Son of God until that was revealed. Ever since the revelation of God through Moses, the Jews knew and know that the clouds surround the throne of God. 
and he is the only one surrounded by clouds. We hear this confirmation, rather we read this confirmation on the second reading from the second letter of, of, of Peter. We saw the glory of the Lord on the sacred mountain. We heard the voice of the Father, and thus we are proclaiming to you. Today, I would like to preach to you about the promise that is here. First, let me dwell a little bit more on the witnesses. For all the Jews back then, this scene is absolutely undeniable. And if anyone, I know that one Jew will see me, if you would be honest to you and read it carefully, you would know in your heart that God is revealing Himself. He has called His three witnesses, Peter, James, and John, to tell you, to tell everyone about what was happening there. Now, for them, He called on two witnesses. On the human point, they know, they know them, Moses and Elijah. On God's view, they are the law and the prophets. So they are the perfect, the absolute perfect witnesses. But notwithstanding that, He let them hear the voice of the Father. He is the real witness to the Son. And He reveals the Lord. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to Him. That's what we ought to do. If anyone really believes in Yahweh, we absolutely ought to believe in Yeshua, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Absolutely. We see how the disciples are afraid. They fell prostrate. But the Lord tells them, do not be afraid. What is the promise that I am talking about today? It is such a beautiful promise that our forefathers, the apostolic fathers of our church, foresaw it. St. Athanasius, St. Gregory of Nyssa and Asians, but also John Damascene and many others. It is great and I really thank God from the bottom of my heart that he had preserved the Holy Orthodox Church, for through them he has preserved this theology. We in the Roman side have forgotten all about it and many times we have just simply overlooked it. St. Athanasius wrote about the theosis, that is the divinization of men and women. For by this God himself is, promise, is promising you and myself, all his children, that we will be glorified, just as St. Paul wrote, that we will be given, those who are worthy of that, will be given glorious bodies to be in the presence of God, so that we might grow to the stature of the Christ. Dear brothers, as we look into it, let us keep an eye on this woman, the Mother of God, for she is the perfect icon of the plenitude of the Holy Spirit, and I would dare say, of the Holy Trinity indwelling. In this month, as we will celebrate the Dormition of the Virgin, it is good that we commend ourselves to her. And let us pray each other, dear brothers, until we meet in heaven. May the Lord be with you. Et benedicate Dominus Omnipotens, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Santo. Amen.